Welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. And I think, you know, Frank said everything. And so this is going to be a very interactive kind of panel. So we want you guys to be awake. And so we're going to actually, I want you guys to think of questions of how you get, you know, to get your creative juices out, you know, and that's what she's here for. I'm just here. Um, so let's start with one of your videos, I think, so people can have an idea, like one yeah. of the earliest ones, right? Yeah, definitely. So. I won't describe it because it's all technical, so you don't want to see it. So this is the sound. It's going. <laughs> Very, very cool. So this is actually one of your first videos, right? Yeah. Um, so okay, going back to before we go into like the details of coming up with this, you had a full-time job, so you had your, you know, you had a paycheck. How do you? How was it leaving your full-time job? and that, you know, security to actually pursue art. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, so with the video that you just saw, basically as soon as Instagram launched their, oh, that's someone's phone. I kind of liked it. <laughs> the music's happening. Um, as soon as they launched their video app, I was really intrigued about how I could use it in an artistic way. And um, a lot of, you know, people, all of us in the room who have Instagram accounts um, yeah. really care about the photos that we're taking and the the uh, filter that we're putting on it. And which, by the way, if you take a photo of this session, I look best in Valencia. That's like my. my I look filter. better in early bird. So. So if you can split it, actually, <laughs> if there a split filter, that would be perfect. But um, you know, I saw like so many people really care about how their video or um, how their photography was yeah. showing up on Instagram and me included I really put a lot of time and care and yeah. into what it looked like and so as soon as the video feature came out um, I quickly like two things happened I saw that my stream was all of a sudden not my personal stream but my friends were posting videos of um, video of Sorry, videos of them at bars and them at ball games and it was kind mm -hmm. of this hodgepodge mess of yeah. footage and they weren't taking the same amount of time and care into um, doing it for video. And so instantly, within like the first week that it launched, I was starting to think of how I could incorporate art. Yeah. So at the time, I was working at a 9 to 5 job. And I would come home at night, and um, the first video that I made um, was really awful. You're probably maybe going to go back and watch it, and it's I'm not proud of it. but. Um, it had a great response from my friends. I yeah. had 400 friends at the time, and it got 50 likes, and I didn't even know 50 people liked me, period, <laughs> of my friends. So um, I was blown away by that. And um, and seeing that, it just gave me like the instant boost of encouragement to uh, start creating more. It was like your first MVP. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and with that, uh, you know, the... It took some time before I realized that it had um, meaning in my life to right. pursue it as anything that could either make me money or give me purpose. Um, but it was it was pretty quick that I decided to leave my job. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't necessarily the the scare of leaving the job that I had at the time. It was the scare of really being on my own for the first time. And yeah. and that means so much more than I think uh, often with us in the startup world, mm -hmm. our jobs sometimes end like all the time. Like every six months, either um, new position, you're shifting positions in the company or- You just end up having to do a lot and everything because you're a startup. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I was used to that cycle in my life, um, but the scare for me and like the thrill was really um, going out on my own and really pursuing art yeah. as a way to make money and make would, a living. Would you have done anything differently when you made that decision? Would you, I don't know, maybe compile some of your work? Would you have waited to, for that first video on Instagram to be something that you were a bit more proud of? Yeah. Would you have done something different? Um, not, I, I really think that I started animating a year ago. Um, I had no training in art or animation. And um, so, OK, so you just do the, you just self-taught? Yeah. So I just maybe watched Creators. Bob Ross a couple too many times when I was a kid. And um, not that he's an animator, but he's a fluffy artist. Um, so I um, I think that, what was the question again? If I would have done anything, anything differently? differently? Yeah. Um, 
No, because I think too many people, especially when it comes to creative outlets, you wait. Like, all of you have an awesome idea somewhere in your heads right now or in your journal. Um, and you kind of, you wait until it's perfect to share it. Um, and I think there is so much beauty in just getting it out there and sharing it because bottom line, unless you have really awful friends, they're not going to tell you you suck for posting it or for sharing it. If anything, they're going to um, encourage, encourage you to it. do it more. Mm -hmm. And that's only going to make you want to do it more and yeah. get better at it. Um, and you can definitely tell, even I can tell with my animations, um, I've probably made over 100 now on Instagram. And um, you know my technique is improving and, and getting better. Just because of you practicing and actually going out there and putting it out there. Yeah, exactly. definitely. Um, so, it's, I mean, I can't imagine this being easy, especially like coming up with new ideas. What inspires you? And you know, like your creativity, what makes like every single video that we see yeah. something different. So what inspires you? Yeah, um, and we're gonna show some more too eventually so you yeah. guys can see more. But um, I get inspired, originally it really was day-to-day um, -day life things, you know, like how to make a cup of coffee and how to make um, waffles or just things that we're all aware of and we all do. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, it was really easy for me and exciting just to look around and think, OK, what can I make? Yeah. Um, and really what would relate most to people, everyone on Instagram, every other photo is like latte art or coffee or you know <laughs> something like that. And so um, I posted a latte art animation as probably my third animation. And that um, that's really when I started to see traction within the first three weeks of posting animations, they were starting to go viral. And um, I was featured on Huffington Post and BuzzFeed within like that first month. Yeah. And so it really, I think that the simplicity of making animations that relate to people. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we can really show the, yeah. the one I think is on sushi. Yeah, the yeah. sushi one. Um, I love this one. I love that. Um, yeah, it's so cool. I found um, about a month after making that animation, I found like one of the chopsticks. It's like this tiny, and it was like in the corner of my wooden floor. I'm like, what the heck is that? I'm like, oh, a chopstick. I picked it up, and I was going to throw it away, but I'm like, I could probably use that for like a drumstick in a future animation. <laughs> and I did for the Beatles animation that I did. Um, so what is your process like to come up with something like this? Do you first like start trying? Do you see something? Do you have like do you write a storyline or do you kind of <laughs> yeah. trial and error? How does it really what's the process like? Your yeah, process? it's a lot. Um, I definitely in the beginning uh, it was very much it was so simple. And even then I was intimidated by it because I would look at some like a butterfly in one of my first animations and I'd be like, how the heck do you make a butterfly fly? And so the concept of that animation was that I drew a butterfly. And I like did a cute little thing with my finger because people like that. And then uh, it started to like flutter and like fly off this page, and it flew up and it landed on my finger. And to me, it was like mind blowing. I'm like, how did I just do that? I'm amazing. Not really, but it, I didn't. It's pretty amazing. No, like animation before. So um, now that I have kind of understood the process yeah. of. Um, how animation works, the storyline has become a lot more complex. Yeah. And so I'm dealing with you know, 15 second um, windows of opportunities to tell a story that will be complete or that will relate to people or that will just bring people joy. Mm -hmm. And um, so a lot of my content I create because I'm I'm trying to be in tune with what people are posting on Instagram, you know? Oh, so you kind of have to do some research also, what's, yeah. what's trending or yeah. what people like? Oh. Yeah, exactly. And so sushi is a big one. Yeah. And um, we that, love sushi. that animation um, posted, I think it's my number one liked animation. It got 62,000 likes, Whoa. which was insane. Um, I think someone in Japan must have just shared it a lot. <laughs> I don't know where they all came from. Um, but, and I, I've, I've found actually that. Um, cooking is a huge, a huge um, platform, like a uh, thing that people like. 
I, that I create in. I, I can totally re relate yeah. to cooking or food, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think if I was as creative and as talented as you are, all of my animations would be food <laughs> or like me in Harry Potter or something yeah. like that, you know? <laughs> like something, yeah. you know, what, like what, we, what you love to do, you know? I love that. Yeah. And I have, I've really tried to, like, I do things that I personally love and then I try to broaden it just to hit different markets. Like I'm about to make a knitting one. I don't knit. I don't know how to knit, but I'm going to YouTube a video on knitting and figure out how to make something so I can hit that in market. In 15 seconds. In 15 seconds, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. But if you want to show the other um, Yeah, the Cookie Monster. Yeah, the Cookie Monster is my... Uh, another <laughs> Your chocolate chip was Rachel. Oh yeah. Like you have your own. I do it like I I would write Nestle's on there, but um, I'm very aware of brands on Instagram and what they have their eye on, and um, not that I don't want to represent Nestle without first signing a contract with them, yeah. but um, I think that it's cute to have your own personal touches of. I do eat a lot of chocolate. If you've been in the break room at all, you have seen the Doves wrappers. And every time I eat one, I like open the wrapper and it's like the profound message for me, you know, like, <laughs> be yourself today. And I'm like, <laughs> and you what's eat. the next one? <laughs> That's why you just need the message and, and yeah, the encouragement. Exactly. That's why you eat all that chocolate. Exactly. That's why I eat it. <laughs> yeah. um, you see a lot of artists today showcasing a lot of their work mm -hmm. on Instagram, on Facebook, or on even music, music and SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. What has innovation, how has innovation affected your work? Well, um, yeah, it definitely, your art. definitely with just posting it out on Instagram and kind of being very vulnerable in the beginning of showing stuff that wasn't necessarily amazing, but it, um, it caught people's eye in that it was relatable. It, it, I think that people recognized that maybe they could do it too um, and they could give it a try because everything that I filmed, I filmed with the Instagram app. Um, and, and so it's very like, it's possible that other people can do it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that, wait, what was the question again? No, 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 it's fine. It's, you know, how has innovation affected. like affected your art yeah. or, you know, and I think your, how you put yourself out there also, I think yeah. is a big part of it too. And then just, um, you know, social media in general has been so incredibly powerful for our generation to, I look at it as it's so catering to our creativity. There are so many, apps and platforms that are screaming for you to join and do something creative. Mm -hmm. And so Instagram, I think, is the number one for that. And um, so for me personally to be able to, you know, spend 10 to 15 hours on an animation that by the end of it, I'm exhausted and I'm like dizzy, yeah. but the next day post it and um, have a result of thousands of people who are just like overjoyed, that is insane to me that I'm bringing that much happiness to a, a crowd of people. Um, and then just on a personal level of, you know, watching it go viral as fast as it did. I can't, um, how, what is that like? It freaked me out. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't understand Instagram in that capacity that um, when it first started being, sh like people were sharing my work they were tagging their friends in mm -hmm. my post. Right. And I thought they were like spamming my account. So I'm like deleting. I'm like, you bastards, <laughs> don't get your names off of my, you know. And like hours stop later, Stop contaminating like, my Instagram. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, so that stopped. Um, and, then, um, and then I just learned just uh, the reality of really what was going on and um, so to give you kind of a brief idea, I had July is when I did my first animation. I had 400 followers. Um, within a matter of weeks, things were going viral. Um, within like three months, that's when I was named MTV's um, top account to follow as well as BuzzFeed's. And uh, I have grown my account to over 315,000 followers in wow. this last year since I started. Um, You're like an Instagram reality. It's crazy, like a, yeah. not, a superstar. It's crazy. Yeah. And, um, and really, I'm trying to do the best I can do with it and in, in continuing to inspire people, um, bring people joy. And, you know, there's 
um, so many in, in talking about what opportunities are out there for yeah, content Yeah, what kind creator. of opportunities or, like, partnerships? Like, yeah. you know, I, you get a lot of likes, but how do you monetize? How do you, yeah. you know, how do you make a business out of this? Yeah, and I, so I have some of a background in working with startups that had a lot to do with branding and brand marketing. And so I had seen just that the power of brands interacting with um, content creators and um, just knew that if I curated kind of my style of work and how I um, interacted with my audience and what I shared, that it could only be valuable to a brand to come in and be like, yo, we should probably do something here. Yeah. Um, and Within three weeks, actually, of doing my first animation, Volkswagen called me. And um, they were the first people that showed interest in working. And, and I ended up doing a partnership with them. And um, Adidas, as well, called my work, because I was still a 9 to fiver, And they called from Germany. And How do you so, take that call? It's like, yeah, excuse me. Second, I gotta go. Yeah, well, we had a, an office number, and my boss answered. And he's like, um, Rachel, Reggie from Adidas, Adidas is calling, and I'm like, Adidas, and he's like, no, she's like Adidas, and the number is like, foreign, yeah. Yeah. and I'm like, shit, I'm like, okay, <laughs> yo, let me take it in the back, and um, and I think that's when I really knew personally that like, I really had something that people <laughs> wanted to engage with, um, but I've worked with probably about you know 35 different brands since I launched. Um, you know, I kind of rewind a little bit. Um, as soon as I recognized that there was potential, yeah. um, I did leave my day job and I opened up an agency that's called Don't Stop Motion. And because um, I, I don't want to stop the motion. Um, <laughs> and <going>? yeah. <laughs> and um, I just started, you know, talking with different brands and taking them on. But, um, you know, my ultimate goal is still to kind of grow this audience and almost have like a weekly to twice a week show that I'm producing content that isn't necessarily um, ad related. You know, I don't want to have like a stream of advertisements, but yeah. yeah. But maybe we can show, I think there's another video that we have and also the pictures of your trip to Europe, which yeah. I thought was so cool. I mean, I, I travel a lot, but my, obviously I, I can't do like something that cool. Yeah, so I just recently went to Europe and um, for inspiration, I was wanting to make my own postcards. Um, so I stayed in a little Airbnb right outside of this cathedral in um, Tormina, Italy. And I went through and kind of, um, I'm, I'm being very strategic in that I'm creating these travel posts and I'm leveraging it into new partnerships um, and talking with different companies who focus on travel as well as, um, you know, like people who would want me to recreate something like this in their town or for kind of fun, more detailed illustration than what my animations are. Mm -hmm. um, that's Sorry. the London Bridge, and that's the Paris one. The crazy, you can stay on the Paris one for a minute. The crazy thing about the Paris one is that I really wanted to find a spot that was like a good picture of like a good image of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. I'm sorry, this is like, it's freaking me out. The ring, okay. Um, and so I did some looking on um, Airbnb to find a spot that said, we have a great view of the Eiffel Tower. So I went through Airbnb, found a spot, yeah. um, got their address, put it in Google Maps Street View, <laughs> and then started to look around to see really what their view was. And I found this spot and um, so I knew where to go when I got to Paris to draw this. But when I got there, like an idiot, uh, it's in the middle of an intersection. Like a car was driving when it took a stupid angle. And so I um, awkwardly had to like be in the middle of this intersection to take this photo after I, I had drawn it across the street. And all the meanwhile, I was um, being harassed by the most aggressive French man I've ever come account. Like, I called my parents, like, collect. I'm like, I may die. This French man's freaking me out. But um, yeah, so this has a lot of memories. Wait, this I picture think you for you. Thank you. Is this going to be off? That's better. Oh, my Oh, this God. is bringing me back to my, like, dancing days of the rap thing. Um, and then there's one other video that I wanted to show, and then 
obviously, yeah. if we have any questions. No, um, definitely. I think that I love that other video. Yeah, this video I picked personally for you guys because you're all kind of nerds, I'm sure. I don't know all of you. But um, <laughs> I did a all throwback right. Thursday of um, Duck Hunt, which is the best video game ever made. Ever made. And so this is Duck Hunt. And I think I like yeah. it the most, so thank Guys, you. That's pretty cool. Come on. I liked Come it on. the most because I could never get the freaking duck in the real game. I was like, God. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so. I love it. It's, just, it's so, so creative. I love it. Thank you. Um, do you have, um, did you receive any advice when you start, like when you made that decision in this last year? Or did somebody give you any advice that actually, you know, had a real impact on how you conducted your business or how you're going to deal with, you know, because I, I think sometimes happens a lot that artists don't really know how to sell art or how to, yeah. you know, utilize or leverage their skills and their talent to actually, you know, make a business out of it. Yeah. Did you get any great advice um, or yeah, do you I, have any? Um, <laughs> great advice. I don't know if I have any, but it definitely has been, I hope I have some for you. Um, it definitely has been a learning curve of, especially when brands are wanting to engage with um, brand content creators to make art for them. Um, I think this is the first time in my life that I truly see the value that I have as an artist. I've always done art for fun and I've always given it away with joy. And, um, but this is the first time that I see that it has value to tell a story on someone else's behalf. So if I'm gonna put the love and attention in, into some a brand's content, um, I'm not saying that I need to make bank. I just know that I'm giving them quality, um, quality content that any agency would be charging them an insane amount of money for. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that I'm still kind of learning what my prices should be. Mm -hmm. um, but I am proud of myself for, you know, in, in talking about, like, leaving your job and being on your own, like, the scariest moments but the most rewarding moments that I've had is when I, you know, negotiated my own deals with Samsung and Tommy Hilfiger and the Oscars and Vanity Fair. And at the end of it, and ESPN, um, at the end of it, um, I didn't doubt myself. I wasn't like, oh, should I ask for five more dollars or... Do I ask for green M and M's in the you know yeah. the studio Should that I I'm working in? Should I become a diva? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's my first question um, I would have. But, is it time? Yeah, is it is it time to be a diva? <laughs> I think it is. Um, but no, it's just that um, I think brands are so desperately wanting to be in in our space and in our minds and and not in a weird psycho way, but they really want to engage with us in that we could represent them, and so. Um, I think that, I don't know exactly where I was going with that, but um, to like be able to- Have that confidence yeah. and put it out there, it actually makes you a better entrepreneur. Yeah, and that's like what an entrepreneur really like, we learn just to be confident in this like ask, you know, find a mentor and ask for help. Like, well mm -hmm. then why don't find the CEO's email address of Iceland Air, which I did a month ago before I went to Europe, I guessed it and emailed him and I heard back within 30 minutes. And it's like, you know, they aren't used to this bubbly little person being like, what up, Halkovic? But, because that's his name. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> He said, what up, Halkovic? <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that they actually embrace it. You know, they're, they're wanting to get involved with us just as much as we are with them. No, and I think in a way you're in, you understand what's going on, not only in social media, the people our age, the market, more than they do, and you have a great way to tell a story. In 15, what, 15 seconds, it's nothing. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a, a real talent. I'm really jealous. I love your stuff. Thank you. Thank you so, so much.